confidently controversial yada yada we sound just like the sound the song (laughs) we do good morning kim good morning emily how are you Oh, I am sleepy. Oh, no. I know. I am, like, had fully overslept later than I wanted to. And I, like, the second I opened my eyes, I texted you and I said, I'm up. And I jumped out of bed and I started getting ready. And um, I was just like, well, I'm heading over there. I know. And even if she... (laughs) Still in bed. And I was. I was like, well, I'll just drink my coffee in front of her house until she... (laughs) <laughs> Until she texts me that she's awake. Yeah, I like that you say that you slept late, just so everyone knows. <laughs> it's currently 6.49 in the morning. <laughs> There's nothing late about this time for any of you. But to us, this is like mid-fucking morning. What is happening? Right. I know. I've missed the whole day. I know. I was I was uh, talking to someone yesterday and just saying, because I had to drop my daughter off at a party uh-huh. uh, that was like a laser tag party, and it didn't start until um, like 7.45. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to some <laughs> other people. Pa- I know. <laughs> I was talking to some other parents there, and I was like, well, this is just, I need, to, I should be in bed right now. Like, mm-hmm. this is just crazy. I don't understand. And they're just looking at me like, I'm insane. Oh, I know. And I'm like, well, the, the pickup's 10 o'clock. Like, I have to go home. My husband's going to have to come back and get her because... <laughs> if he's awake. If not, she's just going to have to stay all night. <laughs> this is ridiculous. 10 o'clock. <laughs> 10 o'clock. What's even happening? Yeah. I feel like um, the other night, I think it was Thursday night, I was winding down my week and I was just like, you know what? It's 7.30. I've made it this far. I'm going to head on back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, if I'm not in bed, like laying in bed, enjoying a TV show mm-hmm. by like 7.30. Something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. I know. Or it's going to go wrong. Or it's going to go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was funny because last night you were dropping off your daughter mm-hmm. and I was coming home from someplace and yeah. we spoke to each other around... <laughs> Probably around that time, 7.45, 8 o'clock, and we were like, what are these two old ladies doing on the road? <laughs> Someone's going to get killed. No one safe. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yes. Um, but how are you? What, what else has been going on besides uh, oversleeping and going to bed too late? I mean, I thought that was a great conversation. I don't know why you're trying to steer away from it. <laughs> Um, oh, is this, this happening again? No, I'm in a great mood. Okay, I'm so happy ahead. to see you. I'm just going to drink a little bit more coffee. <laughs> okay. Tell yes. the people something interesting. Um, I don't know. I was just in my car thinking about sociopaths and mm. how they really scare me. Okay. Go on. <laughs> because they're everywhere. Yeah. And you just don't know who's going to be the sociopath. And there's so many different levels of being scared of them. Well, I think unchecked mental health and a lack of mental health services overall in the United States sure. is really frightening. Yeah. Well, I told you about the guy who, when I got out of your car, was just making some weird noises while he was walking down the street. He's fine. There's no one mentally ill in my town. I think... Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to meet this guy, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah. That kind of stuff really scares me, like for someone to just be completely off. But I feel like the thing with sociopaths is that they can present themselves as not having mental illness. Yeah. 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 Like people like people with some people with severe mental illness, it's like they can't hide it. Like they're just in crisis. They can't hide the fact that they're, they've lost their mind. There's a lot of signs leading up to it. Have you been to San Francisco? I feel like the, a large part of the homeless population that lives outside in California, you can see their mental illness. Yeah, it's sad. A lot of people so who sad. are a lot of people who are homeless, you can just yeah. see their mental illness and it's so sad to me because it's just like um when you see people making like so I I'm not saying it's a choice, obviously. Sure. <laughs> but when you see people some people are just like, No, I'm better here. And yeah. You're like, No <laughs> You're not you're not. Yeah, so yeah. it's scary. It is um, scary. I fear people a lot. I know. They can do so many bad things. I fear. Historically, people have done yeah. so many bad things. Have you heard about war? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. I, people, I mean, as I've told you before, I'm pretty much scared of the dark people, animals, everything. But I mean, even just walking down the street, like to walk my dog and stuff like that. Not even with that guy, just regular people. I'm just like at any time you any could time. come across someone who just wants to hurt you. <laughs> I know. I know. It's a very scary, scary world out there. But yes, yeah, sociopaths. Whew, whew, scary. What? What? <laughs> like we, like, you definitely have met some, like in your life. Oh, like you've sure. come you probably them. dated some. Uh, yes. And maybe been in love with them. <laughs> Perhaps. 
But yeah, it's it's luckily I I don't can't think of one off the top of my head who I'm around right currently. But um, you know they're out there in any moment, yeah. any moment. Sociopath in your face, strike. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say when they get you too. Yeah. They go, hmm, you didn't know. I'm a sociopath. Ha. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Uh, any other topics of conversation that you would like to discuss before we move on to you talking know what about I a movie? Discuss? What? What's going on with TV right now? What's, why is there nothing to watch? Okay. Let's talk about it. Okay. So what I think is happening with TV uh-huh. is that the model changed. Yeah. And they didn't do it right. They didn't do it right. The model changed. Nobody has as much money anymore. I don't even know. Is it about money? I, I, I do. I think it's got to be about money. And then there's just, there's too many things yeah. and places you're paying uh-huh. like, you know, $15 here, five ninety nine dollars here. But still somehow always, it's just like, are you watching this? It's on the thing that you don't have. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Every fucking time. I mean, I feel like I keep the one that I feel like if there's going to be one that rises above the rest, it's uh-huh. going to be prime. It's going to be Amazon. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting Because take. I feel like they have, um, you can get anything through Prime. Yeah. So if you want, you can just go to Prime and then you can watch all like your Mac stuff and your Showtime yeah. stuff. So you don't need to go to those other places and they pull in other shows from other things, which I think like it just needs, we just need to reinvent TV. And I just had this Let's thought the other day. Again. Yeah. I just had this thought the other day where I feel like we've gone through this period of like disruption Mm -hmm. and changing all of these things. But I really think everything's just going to circle back to what it was before. Like, I think that record stores are going to come back. Here's okay. So here's something and we're talking way longer, but, um, yesterday. So we live in an area where malls have died. They're dead. Super dead. However, Mm -hmm. I went to an area where malls are thriving Yesterday, really? went to a mall, so fucking busy. Wow. It was beautiful. I was yeah. delighted. That's awesome. And it was- <laughs> well, I have a theory that Stranger Things brought them all back. I don't think it was Stranger Things. You don't think it was Stranger no, Things? I think it's people. Are- Remember going to the mall? I even saw like groups of girls together at the mall oh, yesterday and nice. I was so excited for them. You're like, hey guys, <laughs> can I go with you too? They're like, the Express. They're like, Ooh, stranger no. danger. <laughs> Psychopath. They're like, that's Strike. a tricky person. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I think that that's delightful. I want that stuff to happen yeah. too. I just think there's more community in it. Well, we were talking about too, like now I feel like you guys don't care about this. This is just our gripes. But um, when you order something, when you order online, you're never ordering just one shirt or one pair of pants. You feel like you have to order a bunch of stuff from the same place. When you went to the mall, you'd be like, oh, I'll buy this one shirt from here and this one thing from here and one thing from here. And you would kind of like do the tour mm. and just kind of like get pick up things But I feel like when you shop online, it doesn't work that way. Well, I do have to say that clothes shopping wise, I'm much happier in an online. No, I want to see it. Stitch fix situation. I want to touch it. Because I'm not, I'm not good at shopping mall, like searching for stuff. I like to go when I don't need anything and I can just like wander around. If I happen to see something, that's great. If not, but I'm not good in like a real life shopping situation like that. I like to like just wander around. Mm Mm-hmm. But if I need to really buy something and yeah. really need to have like clothes or I need to get like something specific, I gotta, I gotta just go online. So you want, you still want both worlds to exist peacefully together. <sighs> peacefully, peacefully hmm. together. Yeah. I, I want to get a, I want to be able to have my stitch fix, mm-hmm. but I also want to be able to go to a mall and, and check out some, some cool stuff and go to Spencer's some, gifts and see some, some Spencer's gifts funny. is still, still hanging on. Yeah. Well, we, you, Spencer's gifts is like right up the road. Like the, no, I know the headquarters. Yeah. The headquarters. Yeah. The headquarters. I think said headquarters. <laughs> I did. Okay. Um, All right. Well, yeah, that's a model. That's an interesting store model. Spencer's gifts. Yeah. Kids love it. Well, yeah, of course they do. Do you remember that? Because there was an inappropriate section. Mm-hmm. There's boobies and farts. And and I think, like, you Lizard know. costumes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But, um, you know. Yeah. Things that vibrated. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't think that that was there. I thought that they had, like, pot stuff. They did have pot stuff. Yeah. But then I feel like there was, like, a sexy section. With, like, edible underwear and, like, <sighs> stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Okay, what are you done? 
I don't know. Maybe. Hi. Maybe I'm done with the whole podcast. Jesus. Well, then go. Get See, out of my house. Bye. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about this movie. Can All right. We're going to talk about this movie. And I thought that... Okay. Mm-hmm. This movie, I wanted to do... We're coming up on a year here. Okay. And I got, like, a couple episodes left before we really, truly hit a year. And I want to get a couple in. Okay. So, looking ahead and planning. This movie, I feel like, really when we were talking about making a podcast, Mm -hmm. we talked about this movie a little bit. Okay. Because I think that I saw the glimpse of it on television and was like, what the fuck was that? I think I might know what this movie is going to be. Because I remember a movie that kept coming up Uh when we were talking about (laughs) the podcast. Uh And it's a movie that I have on my list. Okay. And it really is like a what the fuck kind of a movie. Yeah. So continue. Okay. So, um, so, I, and I think that this is, this was a movie I watched a lot. I feel mm-hmm. like it was on TV a lot because I feel like it's a middle of the road movie. It's not good. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. It it's exists. A, it's a movie. It's, it's a, a movie. solid movie. It fits into the category of movie. <laughs> And, Here, watch this. It's a movie. Right. And we didn't pay much for it, so we're going to put it on TV all the time. Got it. Um, and it didn't do well in the box office. I, I can't imagine with these stellar reviews of yeah. a movie. It had a $16 million budget to make it. That which seems is like a lot. Yeah. I mean, $16 million is a lot. Yeah. But it only made $15.5 million. Oof. <laughs> Rough. Mm. That's probably why it was on TV a lot. They were trying to recoup some of that cash. Yeah. It's like, we need, we just need $500,000 more and then we're good. Yeah. It came out um, December 8th, 1989. So that's kind of like not a great release date. It's just a regular plain date. Um, and it was directed by a director that we've seen before on the podcast. Okay. Um, and her name is Susan Seidelman. What else did she direct? She directed Desperately Seeking Susan. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, it was written by Barry Strugatz. Strugatz. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it has some stars in it. Okay. Um, definitely people that are well known, but the movie itself is not a great vehicle for any of them. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't wait to watch this movie. You're really okay. selling it. Tonight. No, I know. And then I was thinking too, like I was looking it up and based off of last week's movie too, it doesn't have a lot of facts. Like I feel like Weird. it's just a movie that just exists without facts. It just got made. Nobody cared to write any down, any of the interesting things about it. I don't like, know that anything. Movie, yeah. Watch the goddamn movie and shut up about yeah, it. Yeah. I don't know that anything interesting happened on set. There was no fun shenanigans. I think these people just showed the fuck up. And did the damn thing and went the fuck home. <laughs> went home. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's actually based on a book. Okay. And if I tell you the title of the book, you'll definitely know the movie. Do you still want to get? Do you want to try to guess it before I get into that, or tell you who's in it, or anything? Um, I want to guess. Give me a couple of facts, and we'll circle back to the book. Well, if I tell you the name of the book, you'll know. Okay. As so a based on a book published in 1983, um, one of the actresses in this movie is. Supremely, actually, I mean, they're all famous, but one of them is like an actress of all actresses. I know what movie this is. Okay, tell me. It's She Devil. It's She Devil. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's so weird that amongst all the movies, I mean, we've watched so many movies this, you know, this past season. And, but you're right. When we were talking about this podcast, we did talk about this, this movie. movie a lot. Why? Because it's wacky. It's fucking weird. Yeah. Does anyone even know this movie? We have to talk more about this. Like, so <laughs> go talk okay. more about this movie because I, I just feel like it was a movie that we did watch so, so much. much. Right. I can see Roseanne Barr's mole. Like nothing <gasps> mole else. <laughs> rose, the little rose pin that they yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm excited. I'm actually excited to watch it. It's going to be shitty. Yeah, but I also feel like it's going to be pretty good. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but also, like, extremely inappropriate mm-hmm. um, for the children that we were. So, like, said 1989. We were 12 years old. We probably okay. watched it a lot in our early teen years <laughs> for yep. some reason. Um, it's based on a book called The Life and Loves of a She-Devil okay. by Faye Weldon. And that was a book that was published in 1983. It stars Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. Um, Meryl Good damn streep. Is this the first time she's been in a movie we've watched in this podcast? Yes. 
it's weird that this is how yeah, she's entering. This is how she's like, coming this in. This is how she's coming in. But, let's but do she, it. Um, before this, wasn't seen as a comedic actress. People weren't really, like, didn't really think she could do comedy. I don't know that they thought so after this movie either. <laughs> but well, she was nominated for a Golden Globe. For this? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and this was the first time she worked with a female director as well. Wow. Yeah. So um, it was a, that was the most, you know, interesting facts, fact, I guess, about it was okay. that um, it was shot during um, the first season of Roseanne, the television show, right. like while they were on break. And it was actually the first movie for Roseanne. And this is when she like looks like OG Roseanne. She looks this. like Roseanne. Yeah. 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 She's got like a curly perm. A curly perm <laughs> and, and a little round face. Yeah. Um, Apparently, Roseanne Barr later said she was not happy to be involved in this movie. It wasn't, like, created for her mm. or anything as, like, a chance like a Roseanne to, vehicle. Tra- like, a chance to be in movies. Was she in other movies? This was her first movie. But was she in... What, was the, what were the other movies she was in? That's a great question, Emily. Okay. I don't really know. Hmm. Great uh, research. <laughs> oh. Thanks. <laughs> um, I, I'm glad we're at the point where we're attacking one another's research. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Uh, <laughs> The role, um, if you remember the husband in this movie. Ed Begley Jr. Is Ed Begley Jr. Mm -hmm. And they say a lot of people were considered for this part, but I don't think any of these people would actually, were actually considering it themselves. Right. Like they considered them. Like, hey, we get Harrison Ford, (laughs) Richard Dreyfus, Charles Grodin. Grodin's back. Grodin's back. Grodin would have been good. uh, Robin Williams, Michael Douglas, Chevy Chase, Robert De Niro, Steve Martin. Um, I guess, I guess, though, here's what I would say with it. If you have the all those names mm-hmm. and you went to them and said, listen, this is going to be a vehicle for Roseanne, who was like, that show was a big deal. It was. It was huge time. when it, it came out. It was huge. We have, we've locked in Meryl Streep. Meryl fucking Streep. Meryl fucking Streep. Yeah, but Meryl Streep wasn't Meryl Streep at this time either. Yes, she was. Meryl Streep's been Meryl Streep since Kramer versus Kramer. She was in that, you know, the Dingo Ate My Baby. She did. She was. She had won Academy Awards by this time. Okay. Many. Okay. Do you even know who Meryl Streep? I is? don't because I realized by researching her, I was like, oh, let's look for some fun facts about Meryl Streep, and she's just a pretty pri- privileged white lady. <laughs> Is she? Yeah. Yeah. So good for her. I mean, no, yeah, she's doing no her shade. Thing. But she's doing her thing. She's a very good actress. Yeah, she is a good actress. Um, Jeffrey Jones. Do you know who that is? Jeffrey Jones. Yes, I do. He's in. Um, he was arrested for pedophilia. Maybe <gasps> he was. Isn't he the guy who was in Allegedly. Ferris Bueller? I love oh. this Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He was the principal. the principal. Principal Rooney. Principal Rooney. I think it's Jeffrey Jones, and he was in Beetlejuice. He was oh. in. Um, he was in a lot of things. I, I'm fairly certain that okay. that's Jeffrey Well, they Jones. also considered him and then uh, okay. Gary Busey as well. Okay. Um, the Buse. Other people that were considered for the role of Ruth, who is... Um, Roseanne. Roseanne. Um, initially, they thought maybe Meryl Streep would be Ruth. Mm, yeah, okay. it doesn't work. No. Um, but Kathy Bates, mm. Bette Midler, Catherine O'Hara, Michelle Pfeiffer, Barbara Hershey, Jennifer Grey, Beverly D'Angelo, Rosie O'Donnell, mm. Ali Sheedy, and Kathleen Turner, your favorite. Oh. Yeah. Um, it would have been a different movie, maybe. I don't know. I, yeah, I feel like because of the cast, and I feel like this is definitely a movie that based off of casting came out a certain way. It did. It did. Because Roseanne's not classically like a beautiful woman or anything like that. No. At the time, I think it was a little more um, unheard of for someone that looked like her and had her background to be on TV. Yes. So I think that she was an untraditional choice. And I think that if you had someone beautiful in that role, it would have been a different movie. Like Ali Sheedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Ali Sheedy. Right. Like, how does that, yeah. uh, you don't feel as bad for Ali Sheedy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. Um, so, our buddy Ebert. Ebert. He gave the movie three stars, which I think is all he does is give movies three okay. stars. 
Um, he said, debut movies are traditionally tricky for TV stars. For every Pee Wee Herman who finds the perfect movie vehicle, there's a Henry Winkler who doesn't. Mm. Barr could have made an easy, predictable, and dumb comedy at any point in the last couple of years. Instead, she took her chances with an ambitious project, a real movie. It pays off. In that bar demonstrates that there is a core of reality inside her TV persona, a core of identifiable human feelings like jealousy and pride, and they provide a sound foundation for her comic acting. The proof of it is that on the basis of this movie, Streep didn't have to retire to her own dressing room to ask herself what she was doing in a movie with Barr. So like he had kind of talked yeah. about in the beginning, like a lot of people would have considered like like Roseanne Barr out of her depth to be sure. acting with someone Meryl like Streep. Meryl Streep. And Meryl Streep may have considered herself above, but like that Roseanne did a good job, a solid she job. She held her own. Yeah. She okay. she did good. Okay. Okay. Um, it's weird. I, I I mean, I was watched Roseanne all uh-huh. the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was yeah. huge. Such a big show. And yeah. I mean, I feel like I watched it all the time. I don't think my dad liked Roseanne very much. Interesting. I don't know why, but mm. he did not like Roseanne very much. I you know, I didn't watch the reboot. The now one. No, but um, not intentionally not watching it. No, it's, it's as we were talking about TV before. Yeah. I don't understand how TV works. I That's don't know correct. what where anything is. I just, I mean, I just watch all the same right. things like my children do. Right. So um, Meryl, Meryl Streep, she was born in Summit, New Jersey. She's a Jersey girl. Okay. Um, she went to like an Ivy League school. She studied opera. She was a cheerleader. She was born in June of 1949. Um, she has been, nom- she's like been acting, you know, for fucking ever. Um, <laughs> she has 21 Academy Award nominations. Um, she's won three of those and she's been, um, nominated for 33 Golden Globes, oh, wow. including for this movie. Um, and she's won eight of those. At a certain point, do you think she's just like, I don't even care, like, whatever. Or do you think that she gets disappointed if she doesn't get nominated? I don't know. I think it's probably a hassle for some people. Like, I always think about, like, when I was going to marry Christian Slater, I was going to be real excited to go to all these award shows and stuff like that. But I assume after we've been married for a while, I'm just like, honey, do we have to? Yeah, it doesn't seem I like really that don't want to see, you know, Richard yeah. Grigo this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it would be really tiresome after yeah, a certain point. Right. Um <laughs> I love how we're just over it, even in our fantasy lives. We're That's like, right. Whatever. I don't have time for that. I can't do that. Um, Roseanne Barr, on the other hand, she became a stand-up comedian in the 80s. I remember watching her on stand-up. Yep. Um, on, like, stand-up spotlight and yeah, stuff there, like And that. there used to be all those stand-up clip shows. Like, Jon Stewart used to host a stand-up clip show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I do remember her. She made her TV debut on Johnny Carson in 1985. Um, and then right around after this movie came out, um, on July 25th, 1990, <laughs> she sang the national anthem. Oh God. I at remember that. a baseball game. And, um, this sparked a lot of controversy because she was deliberately disrespectful. Um, she grabbed her groin and she yes. spit on the ground, sure. <laughs> spat on the ground. Um, it was even condemned by the president as disgraceful. And the then president was George W. Bush. Um, George Bush. George H.W. Bush. H.W. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The first. The O.J. The O.J. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she's gone on. I mean, she had her te- television show for a really long time. I think that um, she is an interesting personality, like, like kind of going back to the mental health things of it all. Um, there's a possibility. And I think she talks about, has said that she has multiple personality disorder. Yes. And um, she's also been a victim of sexual abuse and incest when she was a child. Um, She has definitely had a very difficult life, um, but that has kind of translated into some ups and downs in the media, um, Mm -hmm. her portrayal. Like, she was pretty beloved when the original Roseanne came out because it was very much this, like, blue-collar TV show that really spoke to real people. And I think that's how she's made her connection with a lot of her fans. Right. Um... But at the same time, in 2012, she ran for president. Oh, God. Which I did not remember. Sure. She ran in the Green Party, and she lost to Jill Stein. Okay. Um, and then she was later nominated on the left-wing Peace and Freedom Party. 
Okay. Um, in the in the 2012 presidential election, she received like 70,000 votes, which is more than I would receive. Sure. Let's just say that. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I think people would see your name and be like, Kim Tweed. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a great name a for a president. That's a great name for a president. Mm-hmm. I'll vote for her. Yeah. Um, she got her TV show, like they they did reboot her TV show, but then there were some, she made some comments um, about conspiracy theories and things. And ultimately they ended up killing her off on her own television show. Eesh. And um, it's the Connors now. Yeah, it's the Connors. And so they go on and I believe it's still on the air and she's just not on it. Um, so her, I, it was interesting to read about her political views because um, I guess she has some um, gay family members. Okay. So she's just very outspoken um, gay for rights. gay rights and things like that. She's openly... Um, uh, pro-choice okay. and things, but at the same time, she does have some very um, conservative conservative views. Um, so she's... I haven't, we haven't heard from her in a while. I think she had, a, like, a talk show. She, she, I just recently, as in, like, the past several months, we'll say, she was on um, Bill Maher's podcast. Okay. Not the show, but, like, uh-huh. his podcast. And she, she came off a little wacky to me. And I yeah. feel like he's... they. It, I think the timing... Was, it sounds right. Like they were probably coming up, stand up at the same time. Mm-hmm. So they have that background yeah, yeah, together yeah, yeah. that they were mm-hmm. talking about. So that part was kind of interesting, mm-hmm. hearing them talk about that. And I think I think he really likes her, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, to talk to her and is very, like, supportive of her. But then she was just very weird yeah, on the show. Yeah. So and, I, I, I like, know. just kind of kept saying, like... Because, like, Bill Maher's kind of weird, like, when yeah, he says it, stuff. You yeah, know what I mean? He also has very varying political views. Like, he does. They, they swing... And, from sure. right to left. And ultimately, you know, a lot of people do, and that's most, okay. I think most people most are probably people like that. Right, right, right. But I think um, he would, like, in it was it was an odd interview. It was, like, what it was uncomfortable at times. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like, she, like, not able to keep it together kind of thing? Yeah. No, and I think she was just, like, going to really weird places. And he'll call people out, you yeah, know, yeah, on his yeah. podcast mm-hmm. and just be like, mm, really, you think that? Right, like, right, you know? right. And um, she was just a little you know, really out there. And he was like, okay, <laughs> like I support you and I love you. And right, like, that right, was right. pretty much his vibe with things. Yeah. Um, what do you remember about this movie? <sighs> the things I remember about this movie. So I remember they really ugged her up. Yeah. Like really ugged her up. Like Harry mole level. Perm. Perm. Tight perm. Harry mole. Harry mole. Like they really ugged her up in a major way. I think this movie is going to be pretty like terrible for women. But then I think, I, well, and then I also remember that it was like weird to me. So it, it, the movie is that she is, in, in my memory, she's uh-huh. married to Ed Begley Jr. She is, yes. Which was, but he was very not nice to her. Yeah. And I don't know if, like, he had kids, but he was cheating on her. Right, with this famous romance author, Arthur. This is two movies in a row with romance authors. Uh Wow. I I wonder if she got her picture on the backs of her covers. She's probably very worldly. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure she did. I don't know that she's ever been to uh, Bogota or wherever she, what was it? Cartagena. Cartagena. <laughs> yeah, I I remember that that whole thing happens, and then Roseanne seeks her revenge. Yeah, and that's what the movie is. Her right, right, right. Seeking her revenge, and she starts but mostly cl- against the woman, right? The other woman. I I mean, she wasn't nice towards. Right. I don't. They didn't end up like aligning with each other. I don't think so. Yeah, p- people who. <laughs> Well, I, I, that's a world I've never been a part of, the whole cheater world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I I don't understand if you're another woman mm-hmm. and you fully know that you're the person that you're dating uh-huh. is married. Uh-huh. Like, what is the what are the mental calisthenics that you have to do to get to a place where you're just like, yeah, fuck that person, that lady. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think it's a lot of manipulation, too. Like, the, like you always hear it in those relationships where it's like, I'm going to leave her. The marriage is over. Like, she's horrible. Like, we're barely together Right, anymore. right. It's not, right. Re- I'm not really married to her. Like, it's right. just a marriage for convenience or we're waiting on a divorce. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you hear a lot about that also in movies, but who knows? Sure. So, yeah. So, um, I'm interested to watch this movie because I think that it's going to be a little bit 
uncomfortable. Un- no, I think it's. I think we're gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, you know who else I think of from this movie? And I there's there's a little woman uh-huh. who's in this. There is a little lady, uh-huh. and she is part of her team in the. Um, and she's been in things that I want to say she's one of the she's the voice of that Edna. Oh, I know who you're talking about the glasses yes. and the little like bob haircut. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking and about. And I really she's remember, in this movie. She is, and I remember really like loving her in this okay. movie. So yeah, right. excited to see it. All right, let's go watch this. Let's do it. Looks like an angel. Looks like an angel. <laughs> I heard my voice on one of our recent podcasts. I was like, wow, I really can't sing. <laughs> yeah, but there was a moment where we like sang beautifully together. One time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for those moments. All right, let's talk about She Devil. Hot take. Uh huh. I loved it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I see why I watched it over and over again. It's entertaining. It's very entertaining. It has a great, like... It's a great message. Like, I think we were very <laughs> concerned coming into this. And in all of our discussions about this... Yeah. Prior, we really, I think, both felt that this movie was going to be very detrimental to our little brains. Yeah, or, like, have... um, or, but, I mean, it wasn't great to Roseanne, but at the same time, like, I feel like she was vindicated. It's like very feminist movie yeah like seriously Mm -hmm. i mean they're very yes they're very shitty to her in the beginning they really they definitely ugg her up yeah and she's real sweet like i like her character a lot yeah i i don't i i know people think we like the weird the wrong things (laughs) but (laughs) who thinks that (laughs) come here and tell us that you don't you think we think the wrong things we think the right things you just haven't seen these movies recently and we have we're doing the work you're not this movie was 10 times better than romancing the stone (laughs) i agree (laughs) oh my god (laughs) it really was it really was it was great right it was great it's got a very solid plot Solid line. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Meryl Streep is amazing. Meryl Streep brings it. I mean, I thought she was going to be a little boring. Like, I remembered her character, and in thinking about watching it, I was kind of like, ugh, a little boring. But the physicality of her comedy was phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. The physicality, her voice, Mm -hmm. she has this very, like, whisper voice. But even when she's doing, like, the simplest things, like, towards the end where, like, she runs out of the car and she's, like, walking through the bushes, but, like, the way her body moves and stuff she, like that. Yeah, she's, she's great. so good. She's so good. This is, there's a reason why she's Meryl Streep. Yes, yes, yes. She's great. Mm-hmm. She wears these hats throughout. Oh, my God. Amazing um, clothing the, for Mary Fisher. Amazing clothing for Mary Fisher. Ed Begley Jr. Yes. Can we... Okay. We need to take a second and talk about Mr. Ed Begley Jr. Yeah. First of all... Man's keeping it tight in this movie. What's up with that guy? He's a hottie bow body in this movie. Like, I'm not into him still. No. But I'm kind of like, I get it. Yeah. And yeah. He, he's like fully, like, every scene. He's like, yeah, I'll take my shirt off. Oh, you want me to be nude again? You want me to just wear a towel? I'll do it. It's fine. Why not? Look at all this tall, tall skin. This tall Begley that, <laughs> right. that's going on. So and much then, Begley. And I feel like we haven't had a lot of blonde actors. Like, you would think blonde would be... But like, this... like actual, like, well, I mean, James Spader is a little blonde. Yeah, I guess he is. But he's more of a Sandy. Yeah, he's Sandy but blonde. The, but Ed Begley is like Nordic. Yes, and he's yeah. got like that, like swoop, like that, like he's got like the big, like eighties <laughs> swoop, late eighties, early nineties mm-hmm. swoop going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this this movie had it all. It really did. Strong plot line, um, great characters. I love a movie. That just has a plan, Uh takes you through that plan. And carries it through. Didn't miss anything. Yeah. Yeah. You you are joyous (laughs) watching her enact her plot of revenge. Her plot of revenge is very simple. Four easy steps. She writes them all down with a great pen. (laughs) Right. She has wonderful handwriting, too. Who would have thought that we would rave the most about the movie she (laughs) (laughs) knows? Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. All right. So for those who maybe never saw it or don't remember this movie, I'm just going to give like the briefest of brief synopsis of it. So Roseanne Barr is a housewife. She's a little, you know, she's she's a little frumpy. You know, she's got like a huge mole on her face. Oh, my God. 
like this thing that they put on like like where you would typically have like a beauty mark like right above her lip yeah oof it's a it's just a big mole and i maintain that they would not have removed that mole if you went to the dermatologist, they'd be like, I'm sorry, we can't remove that mole. I don't she paid think. someone to take that off her face. Yeah, I know, but I don't think that they would. Okay. Because well. it's too deep. They would have to go too deep, and her lip would be all fajude. Okay. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> I don't think so. I but, didn't want to say fucked up, but I should have. <laughs> yes, you should have. Okay. <laughs> that would have been the better option. <laughs> but anyway, so she's real, like, just not great. But she loves her husband. Mm-hmm. She loves her family. She's got, like, these two kind of like middle school, yeah, she does early teen work. kids. She takes care of the home. But she's not great at it. She's not. She like messes up the dinner. Yeah. She, you know, but she's really trying. And she says like, I really love my husband and I she really does. love my kids. And, and she I, like trusts him and stuff. And he's like just doing his business. He's an accountant and it's just regular family. Except and he's she, not, but you can tell he's, he's mean to her. He's, well, he's really He's mean. a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> he's so mean to her. Everything she does. But then at the same time, he like gaslights her. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, I care about this family more than anyone. You know, we're best friends. And yeah, we've always yeah. been best friends. But then he's cheating on her. Well, and- he goes to a party. How do they meet Mary Fisher? They go to a party. And um, Roseanne, like the movie starts out with Roseanne being very ex- We'll just call her Roseanne. Yeah. She- <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. She's very excited about going to this fancy party yeah. with her husband. And the husband immediately is just like, you don't have to come. It's not a big deal. Don't bother. But you can tell that, I, I mean... He's cheated on her before. He's got these for sexy people sure. in his oh, yeah, office yeah, yeah, yeah. that he's eyeing up and he's everything. He's a latch. He's a latch, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he so he doesn't want her to come to the party, but she's real excited. She's going out. She's getting her hair done. She's getting her nails done. She's mm-hmm. buying a new outfit. Like right. She's excited to go out with her husband, and she kind of says, like, hey, we haven't gone out in a long time. You know, yeah, she's excited. And yeah. But then they get there and she loves the romance novels. Mm-hmm. She's all into that. She mm-hmm. loves Mary Fisher, who's the Meryl Streep character. Mm-hmm. She gets to this part. She meets, she spills something on Mary F- Fisher, who's just like, couldn't be meaner to Roseanne yes. when she does this. And then Ed Beg, her and Ed Begley Jr. fall deeply, madly in love mm-hmm. at first sight. And um, he pretty much is like, all right, I'll drive you home. Ro- Roseanne's sitting in the back of the car. Right, the little he dro- hatchback. <laughs> he drops Roseanne off, not even at their front door, right. like a block away <laughs> from their house. And then he just takes Mary, like, you know, says like 75 miles away to her house in Long Island or wherever she is. Right. And just, you know, and, and that's pretty, pretty much it. Like at that point, he's pretty much just with yeah. Meryl Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It um, kind of goes back, like, the his parents come over for dinner. Yeah. And, like, Roseanne's trying to make this, like, really nice meal because she wants to impress her husband. But she's also trying to win parents. him back. Well, and, and she's, she's like, I think when she feels, she knows he's cheating on her. Like, yeah. she's not dumb. Right. And it's that feeling of, like, I know this isn't right. I can still turn it around, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, she's she's digging in. She's like, no, I'm going to save this. I want to make a nice... Some heart-shaped biscuits. <laughs> yeah. I want... <laughs> I want to turn this around, but she just messes up everything. She does kill her son's pet gerbil. gerbil ends up somewhere soup. in the soup. I know. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I forgot about that part, but then I immediately was like, oh. I forgot about it until I saw it. Yeah. I'm going to try and forget it again. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then he just leaves. But the dad is also like, what's wrong with her? Like, the parents and then the well, mom. Well, the mom was kind of nice. The mom was pretty. Well, the mom was like, was it? Is it your time of the month? <laughs> yeah. She blamed it but on she the was be, try, She was trying to be nice in, like, her way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, from that point, Ed Begley Jr. just goes and lives with Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. And Roseanne is just like, all right, fuck this. Yeah. She gets out her pen and paper. And she makes a list. She makes a list. Because Ed Begley does this whole speech about how he's got his four assets in his life. And they are his home, his family, his career, and his freedom. That's right. And she is the only... What does he call her? Like a, a risk? Non-asset. Or a, a non-asset? <laughs> the only, like, well, he says detriment any, to his life? And he's, he, like, fully just, like, screamed at her, like, that he only married her out of, or, I don't know. Like, he's, like, very shitty about why he married her. So shitty. Yeah. It's like, I've been trying to make this work, but it's just not gonna. Yeah, he calls her a bad mother, a lousy wife, and a terrible cook, and a she-devil. A she-devil. Thunderclap. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so she makes her list 
And she's like, yeah, whenever One at a time. Let's get this shit done. She blows up her house. Yeah, fully. Just fully like blows air, it all in the microwave. <laughs> she does everything that you... She was like, I'm not leaving this to chance. I'm going to do everything except throw gasoline on this place. Right. And um, we're just going to blow this thing up. Yeah, and it's a horrible CGI moment. But you it's know, okay. Okay. But I feel like there's a campiness and like an over the topness to this movie that yes. makes it okay. Like there's a yeah, don't hold it against it's it. It's a wink. <laughs> yeah, I like it. But yeah. <laughs> and then they she because the house is blown up, she takes her kids. Yeah, and, and her kids are kind of assholes. Uh, yeah, but I also mean, their also parents are like, age. and their parents are fully just fighting in front of them and base and talking about divorce. And it's blatant that the father's having an affair in front of the children. Yeah, those there's kids no, no hiding. I, I don't hold it against these the kids. The daughter's, like, reading out of a magazine, like, ways to win back your husband to yeah. the mom. Yeah. So. It's not good. No. So the mom takes the kids and drops them off at Mary Fisher's with um, Ed Beckley Jr. And Meryl Streep. And Meryl Streep. And. And is basically Garcia. Just, <laughs> we're going to take a pause and okay. talk about Garcia. So Garcia is the butler slash obvious Obviously, his job is not necessarily to be a butler. He is servicing the lady of the home, though. He is ser- providing a service. <laughs> right. But he, he goes, I said, when you first meet him, I said, is he is he gay? Because he's acting. And I was like, I think he was just, they were trying to make him like Latin or like a yeah, Latin, Latin lover. Latin lover, yeah. Because <laughs> he wears very like diaphanous pants and yes. like his shirt is wide open he's very silky and, and then at one point he's like on a raft in the pool and just a speed up <laughs> and then he does this like dramatic flip off into the pool he's amazing <laughs> and so he's played by an actor named a martinez yes. who was on a soap opera that my mother used to watch all the time called um santa barbara, oh, santa barbara. <laughs> And he played a character named Cruz, and he was very, like, a very popular character on yeah, that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, He's he like definitely main recognized guy. this guy. He's a main guy. But he's had a career. We looked yeah, him yeah. up. He's done well. I'm very happy for Cruz. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for A. Martinez. Good for him. <laughs> um, so, my mom, you'll be very happy to know. He's done well. He's done well. I know you life. used to like him. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, anyway, so the kids get dropped off there, and immediately, like, this is wrecking Meryl Streep's, like, she, her whole life is like pink, opulence, and, and it, just like everything's taken care of, and it's clean and neat and beautiful. It's, it's the cover of a romance mm-hmm. novel, like, and the way she talks, and she's by the sea, and she sleeps in a round bed. <laughs> she sleeps in a round bed, and there's just lots of silky things. There's a pool tent. Yes. Oh my god, I need a pool tent. Yeah, but it's weird because it's like they're taking a bath in the pool. There's bubbles. I feel like it makes it, it, it create <laughs> the pool tent creates like a smaller section of the pool so they can have a bubble bath yeah in the pool which doesn't seem good for the filter or whatever but it also probably would smell real weird with the chlorine and the bubbles they had a lot of uh, accessories for the pool (laughs) they had a lot of pool accessories um which we talked a lot about while we watched this but then but yeah so she so now she's like wrecking the family like right she's wrecked the family also gets a job as not a nurse but she, like, gets a job at some, like... Like an orderly at a convalescent home for older people. Right. Golden Shores or something like that. Golden Shores. So she... But she goes there because that's where Mary Fisher's mother is. Mm-hmm. Um, and she knows that that's going to, like, wreck Mary Fisher's life to yeah. get and this mom the lady out of there. that runs the... I don't know why I want to call it an orphanage. <laughs> an orphanage for old people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. is. That's what it is. <laughs> the lady that the runs the orphanage for old people, she does not, she can't handle incontinence. Yeah, if you pee the bed in that place, you're out. You're out. She makes no bones about it. Right. Like, that's all you got. You pee in your bed once, that's it. You got to go. You got to go. So, so Roseanne, um, you know, makes it so Mrs. Fisher pees the bed. Well, well, she, she pours pee it. in her bed. Mm-hmm. But I want to just say, take a moment, though, because we're saying all of these things, but I think the thing that's not coming across is is Roseanne's character in this. Yeah. Because we're saying all these things that like she's enacting this revenge, but you like her because oh, yeah. she goes to the convalescent home and you have all these older people who they keep them sedated. Right. And she takes away the sedation and she gives them all vitamins and then they're all playing soccer. But she's kind. Yes. To and they love her. They love her. But she is she's kind. She was she, kind to her husband. She was kind to her children. Yeah. She and was kind to Mary Fisher. She was kind to Mary Fisher. And that's, I think, why you like her character. Mm-hmm, for sure. Because and other people are drawn to her. So she meets another orderly there who was 
she's not the voice of that Edna in The Incredibles. I thought she was because she, she looks, looks like, like her. her. Yeah. But she's not. I her. associate them together as well. I know why you thought that. Yes. <laughs> But um, she meets her, and then they go. After her work there is done, she gets the the mother kicked out, so the mother has to go live with Mary Fisher. She goes to the city with this lady, and they start a business. Yeah. Which is also very kind. Yeah, it's like an employment agency for women who, you know, are kind of on the outskirts. Unloved and unwanted women. It's very much about these housewives who just didn't, don't think they have anything to offer the world. Yeah, shows them what skills that they have um, that they might not think of. Like, she's very much... Uh, it's very progressive in the fact that, like, the one woman sits down and is like, well, I've just been a housewife. And she's like, well, I think taking care of kids and raising a family is a really big job. Yeah. And for 1989, that's kind of... It was a good message. Big deal. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's a lot of good messages in this. But she... So she starts this business, and through this business, she... They figure out how to, like, take... So now you got, you got rid of the home, you fucked up the family, now it's about his career Mm -hmm. so she um gets one of her uh temps to go work for him finds out that he is stealing money from his clients yeah so then um they They just kind of like make it more obvious yeah and then he gets caught for it but i love to because um you know her thing is Vesta Rose mm-hmm. is the name of the company, and they all wear these rose pins. Yeah, so you can see that they're like an army of these women just taking over and kicking ass. Yes, love it. <laughs> and then she, so she ruins his career, and then he gets arrested because he's been stealing money because mm-hmm. she calls the IRS. Right, and so he they they arrest him, and he has to go to jail in the end. So, um, and Mary Fisher. Again, we were talking about, we were talking earlier about how, like, is she bad? Is she the, the bad person? Like she ends up okay at the end. She also ends up a victim. She was a victim because he starts cheating on her. He will. And he steals her money. Absolutely. And he's basically like, as, and they say a line in this movie, like, um, as soon as she became a wife Mm -hmm. and not this, like. Yeah, sexual girlfriend. creature, girlfriend yeah. kind of thing. He was no longer interested in her. Like, he immediately moved on. The kids moved in. The mother moved in. The house was a mess. There was laundry and chores and stuff to do. And Mary Fisher started taking on that kind of that role of, like, the mom of the family, the housewife. Right. And Ed Begley Jr. was like, I'm out. Yeah, he just starts immediately. The, the next hot person, woman he sees, he's, mm-hmm. like, ready to make out with her. Right. And I do think that that, in some ways was impressionable and impactful on small brains. (laughs) Okay. Explain. Well, I mean, just this idea of like, they do, they do a lot to Roseanne to make her undesirable. We talked about that, but they also like exacerbate some, like she's, she's not a thin woman. Right. They could not talk more about how Meryl Streep's thin. Well, she talks about it. Yeah. She talks about it. And then, um, but they, and then they have her like constantly eating donuts, which as we've talked about before is a way to tell that someone's can't keep their shit together because they eat a donut. <laughs> well, they also make her eat her like real sloppy, like, yeah, which I hate, like I hate right. that in movies. Exactly. Guys, if you're making a movie, like, right. ugh, because honestly, I would tear up that eclair. Right. <laughs> like, it looked delicious. It looked Those great. little layer cakes. Oh, come on. Yeah. I love a little bakery box like that. And when she's, um, when she's at her worst. I, worst, I guess she has the big hair, the big mole, but she also has like a full black mustache. Yeah, I like say they, as they, I rub my own. <laughs> <laughs> they let that stash grow in pretty much. Yeah, like she just stops taking care of herself, but then she does, and I yeah. think when she starts really feeling more confident in herself and she, as a business person, yes. she's getting that together. And she starts; she gets her mole removed. Um, yes. She gets a nicer hairdo. She gets some lovely clothes and jewelry. Yeah, she starts like doing her makeup. Like yeah, she yeah. just, but not in a way where she's all of a sudden very sexy and everything. It's just she confidence. Looks, yeah, she looks pulled together yeah. and confident, and I do think that women you know, feel all these pressures that you have to look this certain way for other people. But I also think that you need to take care of yourself. Right. And you need to feel good about you. Right, right, it's right. It's not about doing it for... from other people in your life. Yes. And I think that's a big message in this, where she starts looking good not to win him back. No. She, she looks, doesn't want him back. She doesn't want him back. She looks her best at the end. And even at the end, he's... She visits him in jail mm-hmm. with the kids. And he's like, hey, like, maybe we can hang out afterwards, after you get out. And she's like, yeah, okay. Right. Like, like, but he, and she's still... 
she brings the kids to prison to see him. He yeah. is a, we've determined, a piece of shit. He really is. And she's still going out of her way to be kind, but also set those boundaries and keep yeah. her distance. It's true. I mean, I think that this is a truly feminist movie. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's, it's great. Like, it really is. And we, I think we were worried about the impression it made on small minds, but this might have been a really good impression right. on our small minds, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, okay, so we determined Meryl Streep, incredible. incredible. How do you feel about Roseanne? I think she did well. Yeah. I, d- I don't think that she's a... She's not... She, I felt for her character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really she did. She did a good job. She did a good job. She wasn't... I feel right. like Roseanne, mm-hmm. the Ro- like Roseanne in real life and the Roseanne character that you know from the TV show is very brash. Yeah, she went away. Wow. That went away. That you She saw, was not that. You saw her character. Ro- um, this character was quiet. Mm-hmm. She um, she wasn't brash. She was soft-spoken. She, But she also had that edge to mm-hmm. her where she was going to go out there and do her thing. Yeah. And you really felt for her. Like, you really... I really felt for her in the beginning when everything's falling apart around her and her family is her husband is cheating on her and she still wants to try to get Mm -hmm. him back. And I think you really felt that you felt it when she didn't want, like, yes, she takes her kids to the, um, to, to Meryl Streep's house to live. You can tell she loves her kids. She doesn't want to do that. And there's certain points where she's looking at their pictures and she misses them, but she's also understands like that. This is all, like, she's building herself up and, like... She needs to do it. Yeah, she's doing yeah. the right thing. She's making choices that she has to make that aren't necessarily the comfortable choices. Mm-hmm. Um, but she does make the right decisions. I mean, even her revenge, I feel like, yeah, okay. Like, if that's the thing that's going to make you... <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> if that's the thing that's going to, like, you know, make you want to get out there. I mean, you know, and it's funny because she's really treated like the servant, yeah. In, in her, her house. house. Like, mm-hmm. the expectation, like, Ed Begley comes home and is just like, are you going to have dinner ready on time? Right. Like, It can't she, be late again. It can't be late again. She's very much treated like a servant. And she's just a normal person. Like, she trips. And yeah. she <laughs> falls. And, and she falls and, like, the, the plate of hors d'oeuvres goes flying, which Ed Begley somehow catches right. and nothing <laughs> falls off of this try. But... No one is like, oh my God, are you, are you okay? okay? He's just like, oh, you fucking stupid cow. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that dad and his dad too was just like, what's wrong with her? Like, he's like really yeah. shitty to her. Yeah. And she fucking fell. On her face. I know. And he just, but I feel like when he goes to, now he goes and he lives with Meryl Streep mm-hmm. and he, he wants that, that to be the thing over there too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of like, well, she now has to do all of these things. He doesn't feel the need to help. No. And the kids, um, like Mary's house becomes a mess mm. because the kids are just like, you know, doing everything. But the other house stayed maintained until it got blown up, Blo- right. blown up. What is my wrong with my, <laughs> I don't know. It's very early. <laughs> my- <laughs> I, well, I, and I think, you know, she also, the way she treats the older people in the house, it's very caring and loving and just like, hey, these are people who are also being thrown away. In the orphanage for old people. In the orphanage for old people. <laughs> it's like these poor old people were put in an orphanage. Right. And that's sad. <laughs> but she's like, no, they're not they're human. They're human. And they, they still have a lot of life in them. Mm-hmm. So let's give them that yeah, let's life let's let them dance need. and enjoy let's let them play soccer. Them t- their time together. Just as long as they don't pee the bed. They're fine. They're fine. And then when she, when she starts her business, she says, you know, all these women need is support. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's, she's doing. It's like, you're not worthless. I'm going to dust you off and I'm going to raise you up. (laughs) Right. And I'm going to, you're going to live with me now. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And I, I love that. The one thing that I was a little bit, I don't know. I don't know if, if, I don't know how I felt about it was Mm -hmm. the whole part where, so when she's. When she's trying to take down his career, mm-hmm. she takes one of his. Mm. She knows that Ed Begley is going to want to hire a likes a sexy assistant, accountant, a sexy. Yeah, she's accountant. She's an accountant. I thought she's yeah. an assistant. I think that he. I think she said she had accounting skills, accounting and data bookkeeping. processing, bookkeeping, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever. 
So she kind of plays to that, and she gets this this temp who's working Olivia for her. Honey. Olivia Honey, who's she's so cute. Yeah, yeah, and she basically says like, "I want to work at a place for a really rich guy, and I want him to fall in it's love." It's serving with me the and get purpose. It's serving her purpose. Totally serving her purpose. But I kind of felt like she used conflicted her. about yeah, conflicted about the way that she kind of used her to get. Like, I didn't like that she was using a woman right. to get to this thing that she, she wanted to have She knew that her husband, her ex-husband, was going to hurt this woman. She did. And, and she, she was going to use that to as part of her plan. Yes. And she lied to the woman. And, like, when the woman was like, well, should I say that I love him? You know, because I yeah. do. I really do. Like, Roseanne was like, yeah, go ahead. Tell him. Knowing full well. Emily. That it was going to fall apart. Emily. What? When you do revenge... Right. Sometimes people get hurt. <laughs> it's a dish best served cold. <laughs> is it? Is that what revenge is? Served cold. Yes, it's served cold. <laughs> you got to be cold about it. Right. You can't, you can't be... worry about people getting in the way. Some people are going to get hurt. Yeah, there's collateral damage. Yeah, but you mm. can't let that. You can't let that. But she, she's still kind to it. Like then, then she kind of pulls Olivia into it, but she doesn't say that's my husband. No, she just no, helps no. Olivia get Olivia thinks that she's just helping her get her revenge. Yeah. On this guy. Right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a little disingenuous. I don't, I didn't love that part of it. I thought maybe they could have, I wish that they could have thought of a different way mm -hmm. for her to get the revenge. Cause I thought it kind of fell off the, it, it fell out of character for okay. the character that Roseanne was playing to, to use a woman in that way. Sure, sure. So I didn't really like it. I, okay. I get it. But um, at the same time, it wasn't my, it wasn't my favorite thing. They, now they did say at the end though, mm -hmm. that they did say at the end that people can change. Yeah. Like, was her they, they were trying message. to redeem him. But I don't know if it was like, is it he changed or she changed? Well, because we see him in prison and he's like, like baking and yes. cooking and doing dishes and stuff like that. Like that's his lot in life now at prison. Right. Is that he's like kind of being domesticated. Right. <laughs> and um, he comes out and meets with the kids and he's like super excited to see them. And he's like baked cookies, like shitty cookies and sure. <laughs> stuff. And he wants to be back with her and he's saying, you well, know, yeah. hey, well, let's, let's hang out. But I think, and I think she leaves the door open to be like, oh, maybe. But I, I think in watching it now, where she's saying people can change, it's her. She well, yeah. changed. And Mary changed. Mary Fisher changed too, because at the she, end, yeah. like she had just written another romance book that was like based on the life what was it called? Love in the Rinse Cycle. Yes. <laughs> and, um, but then we see her at the end, and after this terrible thing happened to her with Ed Begley Jr., um, she kind of turns it around, and she re she writes a new book, and she, like, starts a new career as kind of, like, more serious. She reinvents herself. A uh, more serious writer. Yeah. And she's like, even the good critics said it yeah. was good and stuff yeah. like that. So she got, she got changed, too. She got changed, too. Yeah, I... I gotta say, I really like this movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was good. It had a lot of good messages yeah. in there. Yeah. It was good. It's weird as hell. It's so and there's, fucking weird. <laughs> and there's definitely parts, there's like cinematography we didn't even talk about like how there's like color change and like she's like it like Roseanne is very much like in these like light blue tones in the beginning, like a light blue like Yeah, light. it's not like it's not a plain movie. No, and then there's like towards the end. There's definitely the, um, like, her eyes turn red because she's the devil. Well, you said but it's then, a campy. Yeah, it's got it a campiness to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got, it's stylized. Mm -hmm. It's not a plain movie. No. We talk about things being plain movies a lot. We're going to have to define that at some point for ourselves and for our audience. Because I don't, I know what it means when yeah, we say yeah, yeah. it. I feel like Girls Just Want to Have Fun was a plain movie. It was. There wasn't anything, like, fancy in the, the, the way it, like... I think when we talked about singles and we were like, it was plain, yeah. but it was trying not to be plain. Right, right, right. It was trying to be cool. It was trying to be cool. Right. But it, it was, was plain. plain. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think that like Romancing the Stone. Romancing the, the Stone. stone. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, yeah. I think this was not a plain movie. It wasn't. I thought it was going to be a plain movie. No. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought it was really going to just be... Okay. Yeah, but it was it was really good. I also want to talk about this for a second. All right, let's talk about there's it. Poor, there's part of this movie when the um, the sexy secretary, Olivia Honey, mm -hmm. is, like, <laughs> getting with Ed Begley Jr. Sure. He places her atop 
Yes. Of a Xerox machine. Puts her hiney on the glass. Puts her hiney on the glass and takes some pictures of the hiney. This was in several movies a of our A lot of movies. A lot of boobs on copy machines. But A lot of butts on copy machines. What what was going on? I guess they didn't what have many phones people? to do like yeah. selfie. They didn't have phones that took pictures. They were like, this takes a picture. Right. Let's put a butt on it. But I wonder how many real life people Photocopy. ruined copy machines because they were like, oh, I'm going to take a picture of my butt. <laughs> so many people probably did. Yeah. Well, okay. Movies so, made it seem like it was possible. It's not. Po- you shouldn't do that. Okay. First of all, the full weight of a grown person yeah, yeah. atop a Xerox machine, uh-huh. if you break that glass, you're just right. falling through. Also, they're really high. Like, you would have to be lifted. Yeah. And then you get plopped down. Like, right. someone, it's definitely happened that someone oh, sure. has broken right, a Xerox right. machine. I also don't think. I know a lot. I, I've spent a lot of time with a Xerox. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and that, I don't think that lid lifts up high enough that you could comfortably sit. Now, but I wonder yeah. what they were like back in the day. Yeah, I don't know. Because nowadays they have that, like, flipper thing on the top. Did they right, have right. that technology back in the day? I don't know. Day? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe the glass was more durable, too. But can you imagine, like, you go, <laughs> you're next. <laughs> On the copy machine. Oh, right. And there's butt prints. There's, there's like, you, you put your thing in there and uh-huh. it comes out and you're like, is that a pube? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> a pube. <laughs> it's all gross. You're like, it's oh, not- here's the report. Sorry about the pube. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mine. They're like, <laughs> I don't know whose it is. But Jenkins! It's not mine. <laughs> right. Did you try to photocopy your penis again? I recognize Jenkins' hiney pubes anyway. <laughs> oh, I think people would put penises on there, too. But it's so high up. You would have to stand on something. But I think that I think that if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> when there's a will, there's yeah, a way. Yeah, and I bet there's Someone a lot of will to put penis on the copy machine. So much. It's, it's probably still happening today. It's probably still happening yeah, today. Yeah, you should um, disinfect your hands after you use the copy machine at work. You should. Somebody's put their penis in there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, God. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? Um, no. I just want to say that I love this movie, and I'm so glad we watched okay. it together. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused, but I'm delighted. Uh, exactly. Well, now I'm so curious to hear the Spader connection. Well. It's Spader time. <laughs> sp- it's the Spader sure time. And... For the third freaking week in a row, it's a mother effing direct connect. I'll pause. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. I know. Who direct connects in this? Meryl Streep, of course. Meryl fucking Streep. <laughs> what? Yes. So, um, Meryl Streep and James Spader starred alongside a Miss Hillary Swank. Mr. John Lithgow, Mr. Jesse Plemons, and Miss Holly Steinfeld. Okay. In a 2014 movie directed by Tommy Lee Jones. Okay. Called The Homesman. The Homesman. And it's a Western. Ugh. Sounds terrible. I would never. No. As much as I love you, James Spader, because I know you're listening, I don't (laughs) think I want to watch a good portion of your um, catalog. No, I only want to watch one movie. I gotta be honest. And we know. haven't even watched it yet. We haven't watched a single movie with you in it yet. I gotta say, I'm a little curious to watch that movie, The Secretary, and oh, I haven't yeah. seen it yet. And I feel like that needs. Yeah, I think, you need to watch that movie. I think I do need to watch yeah, that movie. We'll watch have it. you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Oh, okay. So I have to say it. Spicy. <laughs> All right, so we also want to tell you guys that you should definitely be following us on Instagram. You should be telling your friends about this podcast. Yeah. You should be subscribing to this podcast. You should be writing us reviews on our podcast. You should be following our TikTok and pressing that little heart button Mm -hmm. on all the things. Yeah, I mean, I know that now you just kind of scroll through and you're just like, oh, that's humorous. That's delightful. That's enjoyable. But you know what you should do? You should stop and think, hey, if I press the heart, on this post, someone's day will be made. I know. And someone, and if you wrote a comment, <gasps> oh my God, we yeah. would love that. We're at work and sometimes we get a comment and it's just like, oh my God, I forgot that I'm a human being. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> no, it's great. And we do love you guys. We appreciate you guys. And like Kim said, we're coming up on the 
on our one year anniversary, we have a few things planned for. We don't know if we're going to do that, but we we think we have a plan. Yeah. We have lots of plans <laughs> sure. um, for things, but we love you guys. Um, thank you so much for continuing to listen to our show, and um, you know, listen, guys. Um, I want you this week <laughs> to take on the confidence. Of a lady who's out there getting her revenge That's and right. it's serving that dish cold <laughs> and it's working out. So have that confidence. But I'm going to also tell you this. Don't get caught. And that's controversial because really sometimes revenge can be a little bit controversial. So stay away from that. Yeah. That's okay. all right. Okay. Well, okay. I'm sorry. I tried my best, but I love you guys. And love so does you. Kim. She doesn't like to say it all the time, but she does. I have a hard time with it. All, all right. right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Confidently. Confidently. I'm a